So today we're gonna go over the Delta multi-choice rough and valve for bathtubs and showers. Now we're outside because, well, it's, it's beautiful in Pittsburgh today, so I couldn't pass that up. We're gonna give you a ton of different tips on how to use this with copper. We're gonna share the different tools and materials that make this much, much easier to install in your bathroom. So right off the bat, this is the multi-choice rough and valve by Delta. You have four different ports. You have your hot, you're cold, you have your stub out port for your tub. You can also block this off if you're just gonna be using it for a shower. And then you have your top port that's gonna to go to the shower head. So this is the Delta multi-choice roughing valve. And the model number on this is R10,000UNWS, which basically means it's universal with stops. You get a plaster guard with it, which we'll go over. These are all the supplies that you need if you're gonna be using copper with this. So this is the rigid number 15 cutting tool. This is the auto cut tool which we really really like. You've got emery, you've got your brush for cleaning out both the exterior and interior of fittings and pipe. So you need some copper pipe here. Obviously you need to have more copper pipe than this. This is a stub out for the tub spout. We'll go over that and how to use it. You need at least three 90 degree elbows and depending on the trim kit that you choose, you may need a brass threaded pipe like this. You'll need a drop elbow for at least your shower arm, which connects to your shower head. You're gonna need solder. You're gonna need flux. In this case, this is Laco flux. You'll need an acid brush, Teflon tape, possibly. This is a stop, an end stop. It's a shark bite end stop. This is a brass cap that you might need if you're only using the multi-choice for, for a shower that is. This is a homemade stop for the bottom port. Again, only if you're using a shower and not having any other uh, diverters. You'll need a little tiny level. This is our favorite little four inch level from Husky measuring tape. If you don't want to buy the solder and flux individually, you can get this really cool OD plumbing solder kit. We use MAP gas. So again, you can buy this in a home store or a plumbing supply warehouse. And then finally, the burns o TS-4000. This is a really nifty uh, on-off switch basically for your map gas so it makes it easier to solder but again those are most of the supplies that you need with the multi-choice if you're going to be using copper pipe so a common question you might have is can i use the multi-choice for a bathtub or a shower and the answer is yes you can use this for both a bathtub and a shower so as you can see i created a little mock-up behind me that somewhat mimics a bathtub or a shower wall now the main thing to know is number one all shower stud walls should be 16 inches on center for most backer boards. So cement board, weedy, curdy board, go board, you name it. All the different backer boards that are out there, hydroband board, they all require the studs to be 16 inches on center. So that's really the first thing that we check before we install any type of rough and valve. Number two, you need to know the depth that this needs to sit inside the wall. And Delta has specific recommendations on that. Now, why is the depth of the Delta multi-choice so darn important? Well, it's important because if you set it too deep, you won't be able to properly put the trim kit on. If you set it too far outside the wall, the trim kit is also gonna look really bad. So the depth is really important with any rough and valve and also with the multi-choice. Now most bathrooms are made out of two by fours. We've encountered several bathrooms in Pittsburgh that are not two by fours. So take that for a grain of salt and just make sure you measure the depth of the framing in your bathroom. But if you have a typical two by four stud wall, the great thing about the multi-choice is you just need to use another two by material inside the wall for your blocking. So this is a two by 10. What you would want to do is simply mount this inside the wall and make it flush with the plaster or the drywall on the other side of the bathroom. And that'll give you the depth that you need for the multi-choice, which is two and three quarters of an inch from the blocking to the plaster guard, which we'll show you here in a second, plus or minus one quarter inch. So you need two and three quarters of an inch, plus or minus a quarter inch for that depth 
the work for the multi-choice. We have our blocking inside the wall here, and you would simply mount the multi-choice to this and you're done. But the thing to remember is this comes with a plaster guard. So this is the plaster guard. As you can see, there are these like little hooks right here and right here. Those go onto the back of the roughen valve. There's a footprint on the back of this plaster guard. Makes it pretty straightforward to hook it onto the multi-choice. So basically you just fit the multi-choice into the footprint and you push it until you hear the click. And these, these little hooks notch into the back here and hold it in place. So that's all you need to do to put the plaster guard onto the roughing valve. But it's really, really important for this to be on there. And there's an up insignia on the plaster guard. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it says up. And then on the back of the multi-choice, it says up with two arrows to emphasize, look, this needs to be pointing in the upward position. So that when you turn it around, it needs to look like this inside the wall. So we temporarily mounted this to our blocking in the wall and you have to remove the plaster guard to do that. But the reason why is uh, we want to show you why the depth is so important. So we're going to put this plaster guard back on. When you put the measuring tape onto the wood blocking here and you go out to the front edge of this plaster guard, the total measurement is 2 and 11 sixteenths of an inch. And that's within the plus or minus one quarter inch of the two and three quarters of an inch depth that Delta recommends for the multi-choice. So the bottom line is don't freak out if the multi-choice isn't exactly two and three quarters of an inch in depth with the plaster guard and the wood blocking. You can also add additional wood to the blocking that you already added inside your wall. So if you've got some Luan, one quarter inch Luan, you can add that. You can take the two by material out and you can add plywood. You've got a lot of different options to make up for that depth. And by the way, this is one reason why you wouldn't ever want to tile over tile. Because if you tile over the existing tile and you go to put the trim kit back on, it may not work and then what do you do? You're kind of stuck. There are many reasons why we would, ne would never tile over tile. The rough and valve is just one of them. Okay, so the next step after taking care of the depth of the multi-choice is to determine the length of pipe running from the bottom port down to the tub spout. Now Delta recommends eight to 18 inches in their instructions. So you have some variability there. What should you choose? Well, between eight and 18 inches, it's up to you. There are two different types of tools that we like for cutting copper pipe. This is the auto cut tool. You have to get one for half inch copper and there's another one for three quarter inch copper. But you basically open it up and then there's an arrow on it that shows you the direction that you need to turn it to cut the copper pipe. Really nifty little tool. And it's great for tight spots. The other pipe cutter that I really like is the Rigid Number 15. This is great. It'll last forever and it'll cut anywhere from 3 16 to 1 and 1 8 of an inch copper. The other great thing is there's a deburring tool on it and you're going to need this to deburr the inside of the copper pipe and they have an extra cutting wheel in the handle. So this is a this is a great tool if you know tight spots aren't an issue for you. So we're just going to use the auto cut tool and the reason why is I wanted to show you how easy this is to use. Now it probably needs a new cutting wheel at this point but basically you just turn it in the direction of the arrow and in a few seconds you have a nice cut pipe. So in this case I'm just this is an old pipe we're just gonna go ahead and deburr it using the rigid number 15. It's also good to use a pipe brush. This cleans the inside of the copper pipe. And you can also use this to clean the outside of the copper pipe. Now, another option is to use emery cloth. So, simply just clean about the first one inch of the copper pipe. And it's good not to touch this with your finger after cleaning it because the oil and the dirt on your finger could interfere with the flux in the soldering process. At a minimum, three 90 degree elbows are typically used for most of our projects. And each side of the fitting should be cleaned and shouldn't be touched afterward. And you just want to double check that the fittings work. 
And then every single port that you're gonna solder with the copper, you wanna go ahead and use emery cloth or a brush to abrade the inside of that as well. It never hurts to use compressed air or blow any of the dust out of these ports because you don't want that to interfere with the flux and the solder. Before you go soldering anything to the multi-choice, take the plaster guard off. You don't wanna have any of the stops in because the stops have rubber seals on them that'll melt. You wanna take the bonnet nut off and this plug out because this plug will melt too. There is a screen inside the multi-choice to prevent mineral deposits from going up to the shower head and clogging it. You can leave this screen in here when soldering copper to the brass, but don't overheat this too much. Otherwise you run the risk of the heat transferring over to this part of the valve and melting the plastic. You have to flux the inside of the multi-choice and the copper. Once that is fluxed, you can then put the copper pipe up into the multi-choice you can heat this up with MAP gas and apply solder until the pipes are totally soldered and good to go. Now, you don't have to do this inside your stud wall. In fact, we recommend not doing this inside your stud wall, but rather doing it outside so that you don't run the risk of catching anything on fire. When it comes to the tub spout portion, you have a few different options. You can use one of these plugs, one of these kind of these stub outs, and you can solder this in place and then that way when you pressurize the system you'll be able to not have to worry about this part and then when you put on your actual tub spout for your trim kit you can cut this off to the right size or the right dimension another option is to use what are called shark bite end stops i'll show you how these work these are really cool one side is an end stop and then the other side is a shark bite fitting and there's a little tube in here you don't have to remove that we get that question a lot there's a rubber gasket in here and basically it clamps onto your copper pipe so it's really really easy to use basically you just take your copper pipe and you push it on the entire way you would want to do this after soldering so once you're done soldering basically your setup would look like this. So that's a really easy way to cap your copper pipe. And we would recommend you keep this piece of copper pipe about eight, nine inches. Again, that way you can cut this off to the length that you need for your tub spout. Two things about this pipe here. Number one, it should not be loose. You should try to make this as rigid as possible. So it wouldn't hurt to have blocking behind this and to attach this copper pipe to the blocking using a copper strap. Number two, you never want to use PEX or any, any other pipe other than copper for this run of pipe and for the spout portion. Delta says that, many other companies say that. So only use copper for the, the bottom port and the tub spout. And then number three, this horizontal run of pipe should be lined up with the tub drain. So let me repeat that, this horizontal copper pipe should be perfectly lined up with the tub drain. So you wanna do that obviously before you solder everything in place. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this pipe runs down and out in as straight and parallel as possible with the tub drain. Because that way your actual trim tub spout will fit nice and flush to the finished wall. Another option that you have for this section of the pipe that goes to a tub spout is to use a drop elbow. So a drop elbow is basically, you can use it for either the tub spout or for your shower arm for your shower head. But the nice thing is if you wanna use a threaded piece of pipe, you can use the drop elbow at this spot here and you just solder it onto the copper pipe. So instead of using a 90 degree elbow, you can use this fitting. This roughing valve should be centered on the tub drain. Now, if you're installing a shower, it depends on where that drain is located, but if it's in the center of the shower, you'd wanna try to make this roughing valve centered on that drain. The other thing is you want this roughing valve to be level. So you're gonna use the plaster guard to ensure that it's level. But once you get it centered on your drain, so for example, if it is a tub 
and it's a 32 inch wide tub, you wanna center this at 16 inches, you're gonna screw it into the blocking, but don't use drywall screws. Try to use something better, like galvanized screws or stainless steel screws, because after all, this is a wet area, and drywall screws generally suck for bathrooms other than installing drywall. The easiest thing to do is just use one screw to get this slightly secured to the blocking. Once the plaster guard is put back on, then you can use a torpedo level or a little level like this one from Husky, which is awesome, to make sure that this is nice and level. Now, as you can see, we're a little bit off. So we're just gonna adjust that. Oop, too much. So once we have it level, you can take that off. Carefully take the plaster guard off. Then you can add your second screw. Put the plaster guard back on and just double check that everything remained level. Now typically we don't install the roughing valve to the blocking until after all the copper pipes have been soldered to it. So the hot water, the cold water supply, and then the pipes going down to the tub spout. Now one of the things that you do want to do is use a copper strap up against the blocking to secure this bottom portion of the tub spout. The other thing is if you're only going to use a multi-choice for a shower, you can cap off the bottom port using copper and a copper cap. A second way to do that is with a brass plug. Now if you install the multi-choice but forgot to add Teflon tape to this bottom port, here's a little hack for you. You can add Teflon tape to the top of a pencil and simply wrap the Teflon tape off of the pencil top and onto the bottom port, and that way you'll have a nice watertight seal. So this is only if you forget to add Teflon tape to the multi-choice after the multi-choice is secured to the blocking. And then you can add your cap to the bottom port. So again, this is nice a nice little hack because there's really not a lot of space between the multi-choice and the wood blocking in the wall that it's supported onto. The tips in this video shared how to use copper with the Delta Multi-Choice, but you can also use PEX. So in a future video, we'll give you tips on how to do that. Now remember, if you're doing a bathroom remodel or you're doing bathroom remodeling, definitely check out bathroomrepairtutor.com. It's phenomenal. You'll love our step-by-step -step video tutorials. You won't be disappointed. So check out bathroomrepairtutor.com. Thanks for watching today and we'll see you soon.